it is true that if you give power to words, they will have power over you. Like when black people get uh, offended by words, whether it's monkey or nigger or whatever, um, the people who are saying these things to you, they're saying it because they need a reaction. The, 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 the way you react to it is exactly what they need. That's exactly what, why they're doing it. Here goes my wig. <laughs> That's exactly why they're doing it. They're doing it to upset you. And when you get extremely upset about it, that's what they want, and they get a kick out of it. They, they you, you fulfill their their evil intention when you when you um, you react strongly to it. But uh, here's the thing: uh, if you can't, if you're reacting strongly to something, you can't not react strongly to it. So, how to deal with these this issue is to there has to be like a mass healing, you know, for everyone. Black people, you have to um, learn ways and um, how to heal from your pain and the things that cause you pain in your life. Because you cannot stop people from saying things that are bad. You can't stop people from being mean. How are you going to stop that? How are you going to stop somebody behind your computer screens on YouTube or in the public eyes, people are always going to be saying things. And you can't stop that. Because even if you do stop it, you have not healed from the thing. You have not healed from whatever is causing you the pain. So because you've not healed, um, you still there's still a potential that you're going to be hurt by, if not things like that, other things. So, um, you have to, there has to be an introduction to some um, effective emotional healing um, on both sides. Like the people who are saying horrible things, they have healing to do, you know, because the reason why they're saying horrible things is because they... Um, they want to hurt people, and this need to hurt people is a pathology within itself. So, both sides need healing. And when it comes to the topic of racism, and any topic within racism, most, not most, all people, and people from both sides, or all sides, need um, healing in a different kind of way. Because um, for you to want to inflict pain on people, it's coming from your own pain, and it's a way for you to, 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 um, to distract yourself from your own pain by, by, by focusing on other people's pain and, and inflicting pain. And the people who are hurt and the people who are in pain, you have to hurt from whatever is causing that pain. There is a, there is a, a, a trauma inside of you that is hurt because you're only really hurt by people's words when you're hurt. If you weren't hurt, things that people say would just roll off your shoulders. But you're hurt by their words because um, the hurt is already there. There is a, a soft spot, a, a tender part of you that is so sensitive that when, you, when they poke you, it hurts you and you're triggered. And I don't mean triggered in a negative way, in a, in a derogatory sense. I mean triggered. The word trigger is not a bad word, by the way. People turned it into a really horrible thing. Really, They made it really ugly, but um, the word trigger is not bad. So there's a part of you that is being triggered that needs healing. You can't ask for healing from people over here and then believe that you don't need healing. And that's the, one of the biggest problems in our society today is that people believe that they're, those people are wrong, and I'm right. And the people that are over this side believe the same thing about the people on the other side. And if true healing were to happen, people on both sides have to realize that they both need healing. Okay? This problem of racism is not a one-sided thing. Okay? Because the perpetrator and the victim, or the so-called suppressor, or, and the so-called victims, they both are operating from a very low sense of, 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 of self. 
a very um, hurt state, their own trauma, and they deal with it differently. It's just that the perpetrator is is a, is a less um, is traumatized, but is a less traumatized uh, um, <coughs> is is less traumatized than the victim. But both are traumatized. Okay, now. I already said that we need to heal from um, whatever is is causing the pain. But here's another thing that I've noticed is that people are expecting black people, people on the left and, and certain types of people, they're expecting black people to not be hurt by certain words. Like um, what Rosen Barr said uh, with the word monkey, I heard, because I, I watched uh, that guy T.J. Kirk, and he was saying that, um, he was saying something to the fact that people are too sensitive, and there's a couple other people that I watched that say, oh, you're just too sensitive, you're emotionally immature, and um, that's probably true in a certain kind of sense, cause, um, but I don't see it as something that is, needs to be bashed. I think it's, it's, I see it as something that needs healing. There, there's healing to be done. So the way we treat these things is 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 going to be the difference between um, where we are now and where we can be. You know, the way we treat it, it is is gonna is what is gonna bring the healing. But if you continue to treat these these things, they treat um, sensitive people as if they're just sensitive for no reason. Um, that's the problem because people are not sensitive for no reason. There's always a reason be behind everything that people uh, feel, everything that goes on with people. N nothing is just so. People are hurt for a reason. Nobody gets up and decides to, to be offended for no reason. But there is, however, a certain kind of a thing, like in the black community where people are told to be offended by certain things. And then they jump onto the, 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 the whole PC bandwagon of you shouldn't say that just because. And people do are are people just choose to be offended sometimes just because they were told that this is the way to be because this new movement um means that we're going to start to fit in. People will start to fit into this movement and into this group, this new thing now. If you say, uh, if you agree with us that certain things are offensive, okay? Because I watch some people, and there were, there are some people that they go through this life, and years ago certain things wouldn't bother them, but they're bothered now because Black Lives Matter is telling them to be bothered, or 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 liberal people are telling them to be bothered, or any kind of social movement are telling them to be bothered, so they feel as though they have to be bothered, they have to be hurt, hurt, they have to be. They have to say that they're offended. It's not that they're truly deeply hurt. They have to say that they're offended because they, if they don't say this, then um, they won't get to fit in the group they want to fit in. And, and, and they will be cast out of the community and then they will be ostracized. So that is a reality too. And that's, that's, that's the thing that we need to look at too. But however, there, 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 there is, when people are sensitive, they're sensitive for a reason. And they're sensitive because their hurt and their trauma is valid. Okay? It's valid. It's very valid. So, um, if somebody says that something is offensive to them, I'm going to believe that it's offensive to them. Now, whether they're bullshitting me because of what I just explained, or they're really truly offend offended, I can't just assume that they're bullshitting me. That's a very insensitive way to go about life, thinking that people are... Um, if somebody says they're offended by something, then they're not really offended. Maybe they really are offended, okay? Because let's talk about the word monkey. The, that word is an offensive thing. And T.J. Kirk, um, the, the, the formerly known as the Amazing Atheist, was saying that um, it was offensive in history, but it's not offensive now. I, I do not agree with that. That is not something that is uh true 
Um, there are certain things in life that it, it worked a certain way in history and it don't work now. However, there are certain other things that means the same thing that it meant in history. Because the intention behind people's words um, is what make it what it is versus what it not is. And he was saying that... Um, that there's no way to know the person's intention. And that's that's a good argument. Because I could argue that, um, on the flip side of that, that you don't know that Rosen Barr didn't mean um, what it meant in history. Okay? Whether the, it, the, something means something in history and it means something different now, you don't know somebody's intention. So she could actually mean what, what it, the, the, the same derogatory um, context that they use it in history. And um, and we don't know that she meant it that way, but we don't know that she didn't mean it that way. Okay, so your ju your guess is just as good as mine. So about this word, the word is offensive, and whether it had a history behind it or not, it's offensive. It's offensive because um, the truth of the matter is, the black aesthetic and the white aesthetic is viewed differently. And it's viewed differently because it is different. Um, the typical, what when people call black people monkeys, most of the time they're making fun of the, the, the typical African aesthetic, African genetic features, in particular the facial features. Okay, and, and maybe the dark skin has something to do with it too. But this is what they're making fun of. So I don't need history to tell me that this is this is derogatory and this is a horrible thing and this is mean and the intent behind it 99% of the time is mean is 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 just is to hurt people okay it's just it's 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 just the white arrogance um i'm white and i have nice european features and these black people their features look like monkeys and this is what it's about it's it's about um black people are seen as less attractive than white people and black people's features are more monkey-like and um, and white people's have these nice refined European features. Now this is a matter of um, perception, how you perceive features is, is, is subjective, but there is an objective truth that um, most people, I believe, have this, this, this inherent preference for European ideal and when I say most people I mean people right across the board people from um, white people um, Asians blacks and everybody we have this innate preference for um, a straighter nose and um, more European-esque type of an aesthetic and um, when people call black people's mo monkeys this is what they're referring to they're saying oh you look like a monkey so if somebody tells you they're looking like a monkey, they're telling you that you're ugly. And um, I think most white people, I think you know this is the truth. Okay, you know what it is. Because nine, nine out of ten of you, you have the same perception, okay? And a lot of black people have the same per perception. And um, we might argue that all people have this perception of the, of the typical um, uh, black features. So, I don't need history to tell me that something is offensive, okay? Whether it was offensive in history and it's not offensive now, the intention behind it is saying that um, black people um, look like monkeys. And you know what? That is hurtful and that is offensive. It's hurtful and whether you think people shouldn't be hurt by something or not, this is, this is not your reality. You're, you as a white person, you don't live this reality. You have never been, been, been you're, never, you're not really seen for the most part. Sure, there's white people who probably resemble monkeys, but for the typical white aesthetic is not viewed and perceived as being monkey-like. So you've never really been, um, as a people, been seen in that light. So you don't know the hurt that that caused to people. That makes people feel less than human, less than valuable, less than desirable. And a very strong part of the human um, condition is to be desired, is to be loved. And when I feel like I'm not worthy of love, that is traumatic for people. I'm sorry if you can't feel that as a white person, but this is the reality in the black community. And this is the reality for people in general. If anybody feels less attractive or less beautiful or less 
less less valuable or less than human um, based on a certain um, uh, char characteristic of theirs. It makes them feel horrible. So what Roseanne Barr said to that lady um, about that lady is offensive to black people. Now, I did hear this argument from Joe, is it Joe Rogan, that guy's name is, that wrote, that he spoke to Roseanne, and, and Roseanne said, oh, I didn't know she was black. Well, that's a better freaking argument, Roseanne, because, you know what, the first time I saw that lady, I didn't know she was black either, and I'm black. But when I started to look, listen to her speak and watch her, her features, I see that maybe she is definitely mixed with black. But my, from first glance, I couldn't tell that lady is black. So when you told Joe Rogan, Roseanne, that um, that this lady looked um, Jewish, you should have stuck to that story. Because that's a way better story than, oh, Ambien made me do it. That's some bullshit. That is some straight up bullshit. Because even if Ambien did make you do it, it's not because Ambien, you, what you're saying is that Ambien is, is a racist entity by itself. And when I take in Ambien, I'm taking in racism inside of me. No. What Ambien probably did do to you is put you in an altered state that caused you to not be conscious enough to decide what words to use and what to not use. When people are in that altered state, I, I explained this in my, in my former video. When people are in an altered state, when they're drunk, when they're aggressive, when they're angry, that is when the truth of how they feel comes up. Because they cannot, they're not conscious and cognitive enough to consciously select the right words and, 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 and push down the words they don't want to use. Now they're, they're, they're so disoriented. So things, the truth of how they feel comes up because they can't, they can't consciously push it down. They cannot selectively um, uh, suppress it or, or choose. They, cannot, they don't really have this, this conscious choice. They can't really consciously choose what to select as far as the right words and what, and what not to select. And that's the truth, uh, Roseanne. That is what happened to you, okay? Um, because the racism inside of you comes out when you're in these altered states with ambient or, or, um, or drunk or whatever. I don't know. But you... You... Um, that's what happened to you. You, 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 you. Maybe you were on Ambien, but it wasn't Ambien that, by itself, that made you do it. For you to say that is to say that Ambien is a racist drug, and when you take Ambien, you become racist. No, Ambien just caused you to um, become to to get in a state where you can't hold down your true feelings. Your true feelings come up when you're drunk, when you're angry, when you're when you're 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 drugged. Okay, and this is what is happening to people when you know they tell you, "Oh, I was drunk. I, I, I didn't know what I was saying." No, you probably weren't conscious of what you were saying, but what you were saying is a real part of you. Otherwise, it wouldn't come out of you. How could something come out of you that is not inside of you? If it wasn't a part of your consciousness, it couldn't come out of you. Okay, water cannot come out of, come out of an empty cup. That cup has to have water for it to, for water to come out of it. So whatever is coming out of you is a real part of you. It's just that when you're in that altered state by, by drugs or alcohol or whatever, you cannot select, you're, you're not conscious enough, you're not cognitive enough to be selective about the words you want to use, the word that you believe is right to use. Okay? So there is no such thing as um, this thing made me do that thing. No, you, you are that way. Your, ra your true racist feelings come out. And I, I, I can't call you a racist. Why? Because all human beings are racist. So you're not going to hear me call any one particular person racist. Because you, if, you, if you watch my video, which I have like 20-something subscribers right now, but <laughs> the people who have seen my videos, they know my views on racism is that all human beings are racist. Okay? So there is... Um, I can't really call Trump a racist or Rosanna a racist or, or Bill Maher a racist or anybody out here who have said racist things because um, it's either you, could, you say them or you don't say them. It doesn't mean you don't have racism inside of you because we all have racism inside of us. 
that we all have it inside of us to be bigoted if we want to be. It's just that some of us knows how to suppress it, suppress it better than others. Okay? And, and some of us are more racist than others. And, and some of us are, um, are more in a state in a state of healing, like myself. And so I can now show people how to heal from their from this racism and that is what my book is about this is a, my book um are you racist root causes of racism that nobody talks about by jada alicia and that's me my book is about how to heal from racism how to heal the nation from racism okay how to heal the nation from racism, how to heal from your own racism, and um, this healing is going to happen in layers, but once you become conscious of how, how to actually train your mind to become stronger uh, where racism is concerned, and train your mind to, to, um, to heal from whatever the fear that is inside of you that causes you to be f fearful of other people. You be you become a stronger person right away, so you don't have to become not racist 100%. Because I am not not racist 100%. I'm in my healing phase. But any amount of healing is strong enough to bring you to a, a better place, and it will bring society to a better place. Because all you need is a little bit. All you need is the revelation of why you're racist. And your views about racism and your views about other people will never be the same. So, go purchase my book. It's on. It's on Amazon right now for five dollars, Kindle, and the paper version is for eleven oh five, about twelve dollars. So, um, it's not gonna stay that cheap for long because once this book take off, which it will, it's gonna go all the way up. So get it now, and um, and uh, we're going to change the world together. Thank you for watching.